One day, Kago was lounging lazily in his usual sunny spot by the window, when something shiny caught his eye, a glimmer from the neighbor's open lab door. Known for his insatiable curiosity and a fondness for anything shiny, Kago decided a little snooping couldn't hurt. After all, what's a quick peek inside a mad scientist's lab, right? With a mischievous grin, Kago slipped through the fence and into the lab, where a world of strange gadgets awaited. His eyes immediately landed on one particularly odd-looking contraption labeled Time Machine. Of course, Kago couldn't resist. He started pawing at the buttons, yanking on levers with pure feline delight. But in a sudden flash of panic, sparks shot everywhere as he pressed the wrong button. The machine rattled and shook violently, and before Kago could yowl, the world around him blurred. When the chaos subsided, Kago found himself standing in a lush jungle, the likes of which he had never seen before. Giant trees loomed overhead, casting bizarre shadows, and the sounds of mysterious creatures filled the air. Kago's fur puffed up in every direction. He wasn't in the lab anymore. This was prehistoric. As he cautiously padded through the jungle, Kago spotted a group of small dinosaurs munching on plants. He crept closer, curious, but just as he was about to get a good look, a loud screech echoed overhead. A group of pterosaurs swooped down from the sky, their giant wings casting massive shadows. Startled, Kago bolted behind a rock, only to find the pterosaurs were more playful than scary. In no time, he found himself in an impromptu game of hide-and-seek, darting between trees as the pterosaurs peeked at him from the treetops. After a while, Kago's stomach growled. Hunger was a far bigger threat than the pterosaurs. He wandered through the jungle, sniffing at strange plants, until he found a bush bursting with giant, colorful berries. Without hesitation, Kago pounced and devoured them, savoring the sweet prehistoric snack. But his peaceful moment was interrupted when the ground began to shake. Kago turned to see a herd of dinosaurs stampeding his way. Eyes wide, he scrambled up the nearest tree, just in time to avoid being trampled. From his high perch, Kago spotted a serene Diplodocus grazing nearby, its long neck reaching the treetops. Calming his frazzled nerves, Kago climbed down to watch the majestic creature from a safe distance. Feeling adventurous once again, Kago spotted a slow-moving Triceratops and thought, why not hitch a ride? But each time he climbed up, he slid right off. It seemed dinosaurs weren't as easy to ride as they looked in movies. As he wandered further, Kago saw a smoking volcano in the distance. But before he could investigate, he stumbled upon a small dinosaur. The two bonded over shared berries, a rare moment of friendship in the wild chaos. However, the calm didn't last long. Kago was soon being chased by a pack of raptors, their claws tearing through the jungle. Panting, he finally found refuge in a dark cave, where he sat, listening to the distant calls of the predators. The next day, Kago tried his hand at fishing by a river. But after many failed attempts and several splashes, he gave up and built a shelter from leaves and branches to rest. As he drifted off, he couldn't stop thinking, how on earth am I going to get home? When morning arrived, Kago stumbled upon the broken remains of the time machine, half buried near a cluster of rocks. With nothing else to lose, he set to work, piecing it together. After fiddling with buttons and levers for what felt like ages, the machine suddenly sprang to life. A bright flash, a loud zap, and just like that, Kago found himself back in the neighbor's lab. Relieved, Kago stretched and gave himself a triumphant lick. But when he glanced around, he noticed something odd, there was no sign of the neighbor. Instead, 
There was a small note stuck to the time machine, scrawled in messy handwriting, gone to get milk. Please don't touch anything. Kago shrugged, flicked his tail, and sauntered off home, already planning his next adventure. Because really, what could possibly go wrong?